All right, what's going on YouTube? Brutal Death Pie here once again. It's been several days since my last YouTube video, but I always like to take a break from the daily grind of our often meaning deprived mundane existences to come out here, get on the mic, and make a video for you guys. So what am I talking about today? Well, as mentioned in the past, Battlefield isn't always the most straightforward FPS out there, which really inspired me to produce my 5 tips for Battlefield 1 beginner's guide, which has actually been a very successful video for my channel, might I add. Before that video, you know, it was a huge triumph on the channel if a video got over a thousand views, so I'm really grateful for all of my subscribers and for the views and the engagement that that has produced on my channel. But by no means was that a comprehensive list, and there are many more tidbits and strategies that can help out to, you know, newer players at this game. So if you haven't already, check out my 5 tips for Battlefield Beginners video right here. As you know, we just had Halloween and the holiday season is upon us, and all of us, you know, veteran players know what that means. That means Christmas noobs. <laughs> so without further ado or preamble, here are 5 more tips I think would help out beginners in Battlefield. Number 1. Utilize correct positioning on the map whenever possible. Use vehicles to cover wide expanses, stay off the beaten path as an infantry, and move through buildings and stay off the street in urban locations as much as possible. In my opinion, this is a really important principle for newer players to grasp early on in the game if you want to stay alive longer, which will in turn give you more opportunities to kill. Even though you know there are considerably fewer low skill ways to get a kill in this game compared to other Battlefield titles, there's still about a thousand effective ways to murder somebody in this game with extreme prejudice. You know, all too often I see players, and even I fall into this temptation from time to time, but you know, we put on our horse blinders and we just make straight beelines for the objective without really thinking managing our risk factor or engagements with the enemy whatsoever. You know, this results in us charging into the fray, usually getting maybe one to two kills if we're lucky, and then dying a quick easy death with minimal skill required from the enemy. And then, you know, we respawn and we lather, rinse, repeat. This pattern of spawning, charging in, getting maybe one kill and then dying and respawning again, you know, only to repeat the process over and over until the end of the round can really have an almost mesmerizing or hypnotic effect. And there's a huge market for it in the battlefield community, I find. You know, it's my theory that that's why we saw 24-7 locker and metro servers in Battlefield 4. And, you know, it's very easy to fall into this meat grinder mentality, especially on maps such as Suez and Argonne Forest, which is very intense close quarter infantry focused combat with very straightforward objectives and straight linear pathing so you know for a lot of really good players they can they, they might be able to get away with it and you know pro prolong their life you know just a little bit longer because they have good aim and quick reflexes but really even that is only going to get you so far if you're caught out in the open with your pants down or you're just running down a lane in the open and there's somebody entrenched ready to take you out so you know i have a different recommendation for newer players that are just getting their you know, with their footing and, and trying to get good at this game. And, and it sounds pretty simple, but just try to approach your objective or waypoint at least somewhat tactically and try to keep the element of surprise on your side whenever possible. You don't even have to know the maps that well if you just keep this principle in mind. You know, try to move between cover and stay out of the open. Move between buildings instead of just running out in the street in urban areas, especially on maps such as Amiens and Suez, or even the village in Sinai Desert. I found that if I was just in the streets a lot, I would either get picked off by rooftop campers that were waiting for me, or you know, just getting shot in the back. So doing this will help minimize your profile make your movements more difficult for the enemy to track and acquire your position, and make you a tougher, high-effort target. Try not to let yourself become, you know, the low-hanging fruit that an enemy scout or entrenched bipoded support picks off with ease. You know, there's a lot of players with campier playstyles in this game who thrive on detecting that easy, out-in-the-open player movement. Uh, when I was growing up playing basketball, my dad was the coach on our team, and he'd always tell us that even if the other team was better, not to give them an easy point. No presence whatsoever. They had to earn every basket they made against us. And the same principle applies to Battlefield 1. Make those sons of bitches work for your death. Make them earn it. Make sure you're a huge pain in their ass before you die. Number 2. Use special pickups and learn their drop locations and know how to counter them yourself. So this one is pretty straightforward, but any player should know that special class pickups drop at predetermined locations in all the maps in Battlefield 1. If played correctly and with a bit of teamwork, these classes can dominate and have a significant impact on the battlefield. You have an armored suit class with a Gatling gun and an ungodly double SMG. You've got the tank hunter class, which doesn't have armor but carries a double sawed off shotgun secondary for close quarters, and one of the best anti-infantry rifles in the game, ironically enough, that also 
does decent damage to vehicles and planes, with the only caveat being that you have to rest the gun on a ledge or the ground to fire it, much like the anti-tank rocket gun. And last but not least, you also have the armored flamethrower kit, which is fairly self-explanatory. All you have to do is put on your chef hat and start grilling yourself some noob etouffee served on rice, seasoned with extra salt and the tears of the uninitiated. Usually these kits can be found at certain flag points in Conquest. So for instance, you've got the flamethrower suit at the B flag in Amiens. You've got the double SMG armored suit at the B bunker in Monte Grappa. You've got the tank hunter at the B point in the bombed out chapel on St. Quentin Scar. And you've got the Gatling gun drop at the B point in Sinai Desert. I realize that was a lot of B points there. But uh, I'm not going to go into depth with every drop location in this video, but thankfully the game it actually does notify you with a heads up display when a pickup spawns and you're close by to it. And you do get to, you know, savor the dirty feeling of ease as you mow down hordes of the enemies in these, you know, powerful classes. You know, this becomes especially easy if you have a dedicated buddy to heal you after every engagement, since, you know, the, the aforementioned armored classes can they could just sponge a ton of weapons fire before they go down and with a healer by their side they practically become a standing fortress against small arms fire but that's not to say if you encounter one of these guys you're completely hooped like i said the tank hunter has no armor so hose him down like a stray unwanted mutt as you would any other enemy soldier the armored classes aren't quite as simple as that though but there's still quite a few ways to take them out quickly i might add Armored classes are vulnerable to explosives, so lob your grenades and ordnance at them, as well as being run over by horses and vehicles. The Gatling Gun and SMG Special class are also weak against gas, so smoke them out if they're entrenched in a bunker or small room. Uh, because these special infantry classes are slow, they're even easier to hit with your melee weapons and, you know, to sneak up on them, essentially. I always recommend using a heavy melee weapon like the shovel, the hatchet, or pickaxe because they hit the hardest at a whopping 55 damage per hit and will have a greater chance of locking down your target into a takedown animation if they've already taken damage. If you get behind them, you can take them down in one hit, and even better, if you have a bayonet on your weapon, you can piss in their cornflakes by charging at them and taking them down in a one hit for a humiliating kill. Still, skilled players will know how to avoid these pitfalls as this class, and a coordinated team will know how to protect their special class players, so utilize these assets to your advantage to get the edge in the battlefield. Number 3. Try fun, creative, and interesting gadget and weapon combinations to utilize your class in effective ways. In my last video, I talked about each class's basic role on the battlefield, but there's definitely some fun and interesting things that you can do with each class as well with the right combinations of weapons, grenades, and gadgets. One such combo I find quite fun and effective is for the assault class. Give your soldier gas grenades and equip yourself with the Automatico Trench or Model 10A Shotgun Hunter variant. Throw that gas into a building where you think the enemy might be hiding out. You know, if there's anyone there, hit markers will start popping up on your screen letting you know that there's an enemy presence. And sometimes players will be too stupid to even put on their gas mask. You'll actually get the kill with your gas grenade. But the beauty of this strategy is that having a gas mask prevents enemies from aiming down sights, which will greatly hinder certain medic weapons and, of course, the scout rifles. And because you have the Automatico Trench, or Model 10A Hunter, killing them will often feel like taking candy from a baby. Especially the Model 10A Hunter, that, that shotgun is just disgustingly effective if you're accurate with it. It's pretty much a one-shot machine, even up to 20 meters. It's ridiculous. Dice might actually need to adjust it. Another great thing to do as an assault player is if the enemy has a behemoth train is to just lay mines on the track because it's a train. It can only go one or two ways, you know, and uh, these mines, they'll do gross amounts of damage as the train runs over them. And of course, very seldom do players spot them before running over them since, you know. It's a train. <laughs> uh, the medic is somewhat constrained in their gadget selection just because they have the syringe which is vital for teamwork. And both the medic pouch and medic crate are among the best gadgets in the game so I really don't understand why a player would give those up. But if you want to give up your syringe, the frag and high explosive grenade rounds are great for softening up targets, camping in rooms, bunkers, and densely crowded areas. And if you really want to troll enemies, you can actually syringe them in close quarters instead of meleeing them for extra lols. Another great application for the support class, in addition to their mortar support and limpid charge, and of course restocking ammo, is to support a fellow tank buddy. Hop in a heavy tank or a land ship equipped with a wrench and pop out to repair your tank and buddy if the situation calls for it. This is much quicker than waiting the 8 or so seconds it takes for your friend to do a full cycle of repairing, assuming he doesn't take damage and then you have to restart that 8 second process, further bogging you down and leaving you vulnerable. Just make sure it's safe to leave first and that you don't just blindly jump out and get shot or taken out. You know, if you've got 
a good tanker, the two of you should make quite an effective team, and you might even save his life by allowing him to stay mobile while you repair him. And of course the scout class has access to flares, which in addition to blinding enemies and revealing their locations on your map, also sets your enemies ablaze on fire if you hit them directly. And remember, you can always set up some festive Christmas heads at Foul Fortress to publish glad tidings of Christmas cheer to your foes and remind them of the holiday spirit. <laughs> But no, those are just a few different applications I could think of, guys. But by all means, come up with your own and let me know in the comments down below what you think. Number four, learn how to fight for conquest flags. New players will undoubtedly discover that conquest is the bread and butter of the Battlefield franchise and has been for some time, and it may be one of the first game modes they jump into. As such, it always helps to know a few tips when capturing flag points. One of the most important things for a new player to understand when contesting a flag point is to recognize when there are other enemy players on the flag. You'll notice a little bar fill up with a red or blue above the objective point that you're at, and this is an indication that A, there's an enemy on this flag, and that B, depending on how much the red bar fills up, indicates how many enemies are on that flag with you. If it fills up over halfway, that means you are outnumbered, and if it's over halfway blue, that means you outnumber them. So I find it really helps as you play all the maps on Conquest to try and keep track of the most common spots that enemies will like to hide you know, on the flag point. For instance, on the A flag on Amiens, I notice a lot of players will hide in this corner, as well as this corner among the rubble. There's also a partially destroyed building with the sidewall open, and sure enough enemies like to hang out in there. And many enemies like to shack up in this building here, often hiding in the second story rooms and the attic. Thankfully, DICE included an outline of all the flag burn boundaries, so as time goes on, you'll be able to deduce where the enemy is hiding on the map. So put on your little Batman cowl and use those world's greatest detective skills to root out your enemy. Now, if you are completely overwhelmed and outnumbered, or your team isn't coming to back you up, and you're not confident you can clear everyone off the flag by yourself, you have a couple of choices. You can take down as many players as possible and go down in a blaze of glory, but you do have another option that I would recommend players consider, and that's the possibility of a tactical retreat. If the enemy has a large number of players pooled on that objective, rather than giving them an easy kill, consider moving on to another objective that isn't so well guarded, or back off until you have backup, or that the enemies have left the objective and then harass it once again. This can scatterbrain your enemy and break up their frontline pushes, and you know, if you're back capping them and harassing them, it'll help ease pressure on your team. Sometimes going down in a blaze of glory is the choice many players will make, but just so you know, you have other options there as well, and that brings me to my next point. Number five, try new and different game modes. Yes, a lot of players will be playing Conquest, but Conquest can be an overwhelming and even frustrating experience at times for a newer player. Let's say you're a seasoned Call of Duty sniper who's trying BF1 for the first time. You spawn in in this weird map called Sine Desert because you don't know how to pronounce Sinai from the Old Testament because you weren't raised in a Judeo-Christian faith tradition in America's increasingly secular post-Orthodox religious society and values, and you go on with the Scout class so you can get those 360 YOLO swag no scope and Mountain Dew 420 blaze it drag scopes on bad kids all day. So you spawn in and you're in the middle of the desert because you have no interest in being anywhere near an objective when all of a sudden you start taking damage and the ground is blown up all around you and you die with the kill cam revealing a bomber plane with a front gunner that did a stray front on you so you respawn on another flag but lo and behold there's a heavy tank sitting on your flag and no matter how many nukes your team throws at it it just quick repairs infinitely and you eat a canister shot to the face this series of unfortunate events compounds, and it's clear that this hypothetical character of my own contriving isn't having a good time, and is likely frustrated and extra salty. And sometimes I think, you know, we can relate to Mr. Cod over here, especially when we're new and we're just trying to learn. You can run into a lot of frustrating situations. I find Conquest is comprised of more experienced veteran players finding their way into powerful, advantageous positions, and then spending that round preying upon the weak. And that's part of why I love Conquest. It's deep and challenging, but it can also be frustrating and discouraging if all you're doing is being ground to powder. So just know that if you're still learning, there are easier, more casual games modes than just playing Conquest. If you want to learn or get your bearings, or you don't you know, want to have to deal with all these vehicles, try out a smaller game mode like Team Deathmatch or Domination. This really helped me out when I was a newer player just trying to cut my teeth and learn the game mechanics. Once you get more comfortable with that, you can try out more complex game modes like Rush, Conquest, or a mixture of Rush and Conquest called Operations. 
And that is what I had for you guys today. A bit of a longer video. Uh, you know, some of you guys, you might be wondering where my scout guide is. Just know that I'm still playing around with that class. You know, just trying to find the most helpful tips and strategies that I can. I mean, I've poured hundreds of hours into Battlefield across the year, so clearly I've ascended unto Battlefield Godhood where all bow down and none dare defy my superhuman abilities. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just like the rest of you guys. You know, I'm a Battlefield player who tries, you know, my best to help his team win and try to put up a decent score while I'm at it. You know, sometimes I succeed and win. Other times I fail and just try to learn from it. I'm not one of those channels that simply does a four or five minute commentary, you know, just merely relaying information that can be Googled in one minute. I actually try and share some thoughts and insight in the videos that I think might actually be helpful for you guys. But I need some more time with the scout before I write a full-on guide for them. Admittedly, bolt actions aren't my forte. I'm a pretty aggressive player who doesn't like to sit back like your old creepy Uncle Gary during a festive family gathering, eyeing the children. I like to get up close, more akin to Donald Trump, and grab him by the pussy, figuratively speaking. <laughs> so uh, bear with me as I just learn to get good with the scout, and I'll have my thoughts and tips on that class coming soon. But enough rambling, guys. What are your guys' thoughts? Did you like what you heard today? Do you agree or disagree? Is there anything else you want to add that I may have missed or things you'd recommend to help new players out? If you want to leave a comment, you guys know what to do. But that's what it's going to be today, guys. This has been Brutal Death Pie. I'll speak with you guys again soon. Have a good one. I'm out.